Hello everyone, and today's tutorial is not a pivot tutorial, but moreover an animation tutorial. You can apply this in any kind of software that you're using, even in traditional animation. So yeah, it's moreover of me teaching you the techniques and the things that I've learned so far and trying to explain it to you guys. Now if you find this tutorial somewhat of a nuisance or a insult to your um, intelligence then I'm really sorry that's not the intention behind this this is just me downplaying and trying to explain and breaking it down so that you guys can understand how things work and the thought process behind this so first of all what we're going to break down and try to explain is the ovary punch shot in my animation that I did in a stream once so this is the shot that I'm going to try and break down and also explain how I made it so first of all is I did this in a stream which is I'm just gonna show it in this video um, also the stream is unlisted most of the videos so they are put in a playlist I'm gonna put the playlist link in the description you can also visit my channel the, the playlist it's it's in my channel so you can watch it there so yeah this is what we called uh, an ovary punch. I think I mentioned it, I'm not sure, but you know, I'm following along with the uh, bullet kind of thing, it, it notes in the side, so yeah. So how I did it is basically like this. I'm gonna scream through this, so. Yeah, you understand that? I'm just kidding. That's not how it works, tutorials, right? So first of all, I animated the circle, the head in itself, so. There you see I'm animating it uh, I'm moving I'm gonna move my mouse right here on the left side just to not confuse you to look at the mouse here just so yeah I'm gonna move this here and then I'll tell you to look at at the top here or something because I keep re-recording this and I keep forgetting that there's two mouse here and when I'm watching it again I'm just under, I'm just like it's hard to follow where to look at and stuff like that so yeah we're totally gonna talk about that later so first is I added this line here as you can see um, so yeah it's like a smiley face now but yeah ignore that um, <laughs> so I added the lines and then this cross line this helps me to look at or understand where the face is facing or where the face is looking at or whatever English is really hard I know face is facing right so yeah and then things are a bit wonky when they're facing in different way such as like this as you can see I'm moving the mouse here you can see look at this eyes here it's smaller than this one here right because the face is facing like in an angle where we almost see the other eye but we don't really completely see it flat right and a lot of people who uses you know faces or add face in and pivot they don't know how to do that and all that stuff so here I'm just literally drawing the eyes in every single frame as you can see um, so yeah so my workflow on this one is to animate the head first and then add the bodies later so if you just follow my mouse on the left and then look at, at the top here just keep your eye on the top there and you can see how I add the body later and I add the body later like so so yeah so you see how I just added the body after. Sometimes other people might add the arm only in every other single frame. Sometimes they don't, so yeah. So this skill that I learned is obviously drawing. Now, first of all, you don't really need to be good at drawing. You just need to understand the principles uh, behind drawing. Yes, you can practice drawing, like just draw some sphere here and there, try to put something on it and all that stuff so you can understand how it works. So yeah, but you don't really need to be good at it whenever you're using programs like Pivot or 3D programs. You don't really need to be good at them. You just need to understand character design sometimes. You just need to understand things like that, right? And then try and apply them to whatever you learn uh, from there. So yeah, so here's an example of how would it work from reality. So first of all, when we're drawing things like this that has something on it, its face or surface, um, obviously it's going to be squished a little bit, just like this eye here, it's squished a little bit. And this is, you know, bigger than this eye, 
obviously if I move the camera here for looking down this is you know the eye here is just like flat at all like it's non-existent Meanwhile, this eye is kind of stretched and all that stuff. Um, by the way, this program is Blender. It's free, so you can download it. Um, I'm not going to put the link here. Uh, I'll try, okay? I'll just put the link here. But yeah, it's free, so you guys can try it and all that stuff as long as your computer can handle it. So yeah, we know, let's say we know about the drawings, right? We know the basic of drawing. We can apply it in Pivot or whatever. Yeah, sure, go ahead. We can, we can do that. But what about um, camera lenses? So yeah we know about perspective but do we know about camera lenses do you know how that actually affects um, perspective actually let me just show you how it actually affects uh, perspective so if you have a lens if you have a DSLR or a camera I don't know um, if you can change the lens the focal length of the lens it'll distort the image um, if I have to give another example of this uh, another example of it is in Minecraft where you can change the FOV of uh, you know your character or whatever so here in Blender you can surprise surprise do that here so as you can see you can make things really distorted I just changed the focal length I didn't change the camera I didn't zoom out the camera zooming out the camera is this the scroll wheel so yeah we're in the same place right now but I just changed the focal length so how will that look like in compared to this so if you can see this this is totally like one of those scenes in anime where the character just seen some fucked up shit so yeah if i change this to regular uh, like before as you can see this is not distorted at all and if i just make this like that and then i zoom in back you see how this is a little bit like flatter now and distorted and that also applies to this like this box here is a bit wonky or different and it's if you still you know can't tell that there's a bit of distortion let me just exaggerate this to the maximum level yeah this is what's happening so yeah that's a, a big distortion right there even if I zoom in this is just stretched out like I didn't stretch the object I just changed the, the lens I just changed the focal length of the lens now if we go back and try and put it back to normal as you can see if I just zoom in a little bit it starts to you know be again this is like really stretched even though in reality that's just a small box it's you know it's all equal side but now it looks like a rectangle right here right so there you go that's that's focal length for you guys and also not just making things stretched out you can also make things look really flat like so so this is really weird but you know that's just how reality works whenever uh light refracts to certain angle of mirrors and all that stuff so there you go not only mirrors but you know the thickness of the mirror or the glass or whatever so how does that apply in pivot and also if you're not still convinced here's another example of distortion and how things really played out in in 3d so you played dragon ball fighter z right let me just mute this so as you can see gohan's hand here just went gomu gomu no mi so basically the cinematic uh, camera for this is the camera is behind him and they want to emphasize his hand of course so they make his hand bigger so it looks bigger right um towards us so yeah uh, also i didn't mention what is obery punch obery punch you can go to sakuga boru uh, this is the thing that I'm trying to teach you guys the Obari Punch um, and have a lot of reference here for Obari Punch so as you can see uh, su such as this one um, so Obari Punch like that um, so yeah you can use you know them as a reference but I don't really suggest to rotoscope them unless you are just trying to learn things um, so yeah because rotoscoping and then publishing things as your work is plagiarizing you know plagiarizing it's 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 I, I don't know why I say plagiarizing but it's plagiarizing so it's stealing so yeah if people notice that you yank, yank that so they, they'll sue you or something so yeah and of course you have to also say it out loud saying that hey I just just copied this part here and all that stuff if ever you feel bad about it or something so um, yeah Next is, what is next?
distortion yeah so let me explain it here in pivot so obviously the hand is bigger than the face obviously the hand is bigger like everywhere like this hand is almost covering the rest of the um you know screen so there you go there's distortion there so you have to understand how distortion plays so this doesn't need to be like mathematically correct you just have to look at it first and say to yourself i guess that looks fine All right you don't need to force yourself to say to yourself like i doesn't need to be picture perfect like even here like look at this arm it's really like it, it's wonky right it, this hand is really big even though it should be small because it's farther away from us but you know i just played along with it I'm, I'm just that tired i guess i don't know but yeah so what is next animation wise first of all i just want to kind of talk a little bit about spacing and all that stuff so let me just undo some stuff here there you go so a while ago i put some dots here these dots are the places of the center of his nose like where the eyes are in between so as you can see the dot is there the dot is next here which is between of his eyes and here and next here stays there and then moves there so the, this dots are usually signifying the spacing now the spacing is not where the dots are the spacing is the distance between the dots so let me just try and zoom in and oh sorry and then put some distance between these dots with a different color let's see and then there you go so oh, i'm used with a different program i'm sorry so there you go it games wider smaller and then smaller and then you know there's a hold here and then it becomes wider again it crosses the vertical line and there we go so those are the spacing the blue lines and the spacing usually because of the i guess uh, perspective it's different so it looks smooth but because if i put like this dots and lines it doesn't look smooth at all right because of spacing so let me just no, well not spacing because of the distortion so let me just clear this out and i'll draw a perfect smooth line and it will totally like just you know change your perspective i guess for the motion so let's say the motion that i was trying to capture is this right and if i just play the animation alongside with that it totally looks as if it's actually going there that motion itself so yeah um but in reality it's like this it's a wonky lines of zigzag but it has the general idea of that curve right so yeah in animation wise that's how it works especially if it's in perspective so here it's a little bit smaller and then it becomes wider because uh, the difference between those two drawings are really like it's not drawings but the frames are really huge because it's going towards us and the perspective on that is different too like you know it's like it stretches itself out so there you go and everything is also big spacing such as this one so yeah next is the composition the composition behind it right the composition in obari punch now if you watch the we watch this here as an example obviously we don't know where we're looking at first but because we're his hands are here and also here there's even the background there's kind of helping for the direction we're looking at his face usually um there's this test conducted before where most of the audience usually look at the face 99 percent they'll always look at the face first so there you go um that's one of the psychological things going on there but yeah so here the arms kind of helped to emphasize where we're looking at and also that's what i did here so if i just go here and let's use a different color red and just you know point at the fingers here the fingers is actually kind of pointing towards his face and here and here everything is intersecting and pointing 
trying to point at his face. Next is this part here. This hand is still kind of pointing there, you know, like it's that the arm itself still pointing there. So if there's a cut before this, the shot before this, if my eyes were led here, composition is where you look at, right? So if my eyes were led here, my eyes were led here, all of this that is pointing towards that will help me to towards this to look at there right so even this part here this finger is pointing there yeah I know this exists but because this has a bigger portion my eyes is not obviously gonna oh look at this here and even if I did look at here this also led there everything is going towards this guy's face and uh, Vegeta's face I guess and this also, the lines here, the speed lines is also helping. Uh, I'm, I know that it's on the center, but still, um, it helps a, a lot. And then it becomes just a, a it, you know, it becomes a big arrow, literally here the arm. Uh, I could totally make this wider like that, but because I'm lazy and all that stuff, then I, I just settled for, for that post. So there you go. And eventually goes down you know all that stuff and then here is a bit of problem for me I guess as soon as he uh, cross the center here we don't know where to look at anymore you're conflicted between staying on his face or looking at here I could totally put a hold on here so that we can slowly shift our eye on his hand but because it's a swing um, as you can see here because it's a movement and I'm trying to sell um, I didn't do it <laughs> so yeah it's it's a bit wonky there but it works because that's also what they did here as you can see um, if I'm gonna put and try a hold on this as you can see we don't know where to look at so if the face was the first thing we look at here right the face is close to us the face we're still looking at the face right the face is obviously half more than half of the screen and then it's still there the face right but it's slowly moving our eye here we're slowly moving our eye there and then eventually they just did this the next frame it's a limited animation thing but it works right the fist is just right in front of us so yeah they held this for long enough where the information or our eyes is traveling across the screen eventually led to his arm and there we go if i play this i think it's a enough number of frames the, that it held there so there you go so there's a lot of things that was put into it um basically yeah also this program is tv paint you don't need to buy it um it, it's really expensive so <laughs> there you go um so yeah there's a lot of things going on when you're animating just not just the spacing and timing but also the perspective of the drawing or the perspective of the action or whatever and the, the camera distortion the composition where do you want the audience to look at and all those stuff that you have to think but you don't need to be pressured about it because right now i have to be honest with you this first few frames were all natural i just did them all and when i tried to you know made a break uh through well i think breakthrough i don't know when i break yeah breakdown there you go mental breakdown when i try to break it down i started to realize that wow okay I, there's actually some sort of meaning here or something like that so there you go you you have to consider you have to, to try and look at it in a different perspective and understand that whoa you know like this is way uh different or something like that so yeah i hope this kind of helped you guys um if you have other questions of how I made things or animate things and you want me to explain it this way um, please uh, leave it in the comment section because I'm not sure if they're you know normal things like flowing motion like tails and all that stuff um, those are different like obviously I can teach you guys how to use pivot but I don't know if I can teach you guys how to apply flow of motion in every single kind of motion that you want to create because it's everywhere right like it could be in hairs it could be in clothing it could be in tails obviously but yeah those kind of stuff um i think that's it for now um also there's a lot of youtubers out there who can teach uh animation uh better than i do so don't settle 
for just me just because I use this program and all that stuff because obviously I'm using different programs right so yeah <laughs> there you go um, that's it for now and you know if you like this video leave a like and if you don't like it leave a dislike if you have something to complain about leave a comment right um, but yeah there you go bye bye now